Welcome to webinar part two of the webinar set on first steps with Transit Next. This recording shall accompany you while taking first steps with Transit Next Professional and Transit Next Freelance Pro. Please be aware of the fact that Transit Next Freelance Pro has some restrictions compared to Transit Next Professional. This webinar will cover functionalities which are available in both versions. This is part two of a set of four webinars. In webinar part two, you will see first steps on how to prepare and finish a simple translation project, basic translation with fuzzy matches and terminology, and basic proofreading options. The beginning of all translations is the text, which is to be translated. In our case, we start with a simple and short PowerPoint presentation on basic nutrition. This presentation is, on, is held to be le held on a lec as lecture on a food congress. It needs to be translated from English into German. Let's have a look at the steps of the workflow we have to take in order to process this file in Transit Next. Here we have a simple workflow of a translation project. First, we have the file in the source language. In Transit Next, we define a project for it. The project of in the project definition, we indicate, for example, settings like source and target language. Then the import takes place. During the import, the files are prepared for processing them in, tr in the Transit Next editor, which means a language pair is created. For each file, we receive during the import a language pair. One file gets the extension of the source language, and one file gets the extension of the target language. For now, both languages have the content of the source language. The next step is to work in the editor. Here, the translation and the following proofreading steps are done. After this, the target file is completely in the target language and after this the export takes place. The target file is converted into its original format again. Now let me show you how we do this in transit. We start transit. First dialog is the Select user role dialog, we select the role super user. For now, we do not want to work on a, on, a pro, on a previous project. We want to create a new project, so I clicked on cancel. For the first project, we, we select interfaces and this way. We have several ways of creating a project. For now, we just concentrate on the most basic options for project creation. This is when we select here for our PowerPoint file, Microsoft Office. First, we indicate a name. and click on Next. Now we have to select the source, which is English, and the target language, which is German. In general, this list, which is presented, is divided into two parts. First, all the main languages are listed, and further down, it starts from A again, and all the language variants are presented.
Next. Now we have to select the project files. We select a folder for this. We are prompted to this folder, which is called Import Data. I predefined this Import Data folder in the User Preferences in order to be prompted into this folder by default, where I store the files which I want to process with Transit. I select this folder and click on Open. and click on Next. For now, we do not have any reference project, folders, or files. I click on Next. I receive a summary, and all the settings are presented in this list. Everything is OK, so we click on Finish. The next step is the import. And we have created the project successfully, and yes, we want to in import now. I click on yes, and the import project dialog is opened. Here, all the target languages are presented. In our case, it's just German. And we click on start import. Now, for our PowerPoint presentation file, a language pair is created. I click on OK. I close the import dialog. Now, you, you see all the way on top the name of the project, which is opened now. And if you want to check the settings, you can open up here. <coughs> and a whole range of reference cards is shown. The wizard guided us through the most basic ones, meaning the name, the languages, and the file. And we can see our settings here. Let me address one reference card, which is, the, which is folders. Here we see the working folder. Transit automatically created in the installation folder, in the folder project, a folder which has the same name as our project. Here, in this folder, the language pair is stored. I click on OK. Now, let's open the language pair. The language pair is divided into two parts. It's the source, and it's the target. Everything which has to do with the source language is always marked in green. Everything which has to do with the target language is always marked in red. The language pair is structured into segments, which we can see here. The segments are numbered. We see the numbers in this column. Segment number three does exclusively contain formatting information. That's why it's hidden as default. So is segment number five and segment number seven and nine and 11. To start the translation, we just click into the first segment and start translating. Just translate it. I select, I delete the rest of the segment, and I press Alternate Insert in order to mark this segment as translated. And I receive a fuzzy match for this. We did not indicate any reference material. This fuzzy match, based on the source, derives from the segment I have just translated currently. The fuzzy source window is structured into several lines. The first line shows us the minimum quality. Then here, the path leading to the language pair where this fuzzy segment comes from. Then 
in this line, we see how the sentence or a segment was previously. Now, we see the new, how the new segment is. And here we see the translation which Transi can offer us from the reference material. So I can just edit here, take it over with alternate enter, and press alternate insert in order to mark this as translated. Segment number six has been translated automatically. This is done by transit. If transit finds a 100% match, it inserts this automatically. Of course, if you do not want transit to do so, you can deactivate this. Now we have the cursor in segment number eight, which is the next segment we need to translate. So I start. Now I want to translate healthy. I see that healthy is surrounded by two blue numbers. These two blue numbers are called markup ID numbers. Markup is formatting. So this number one in this segment represents bold. The word healthy is formatted in bold. If we want to see what this markup number one stands for, we look at the markup window and see it is formatting bold. In order to assign this formatting to my translation of healthy, I just press Control and the ID number and continue typing. So automatically tra Transit assigns to my translation the correct formatting. The cursor is still within my formatting to leave this, I just click behind it, and I can now press alternate insert in order to mark it as translated. I'm quite sure that you have noticed this red circle line. This circle line has the task that if I press alternate insert, everything which is on top of this circle line will be deleted automatically. So I press alternate insert and it's deleted and transit goes to the next segment. For this segment, we also get a fuzzy match based on the source. But now we have one line more. We have, again, the first line, which shows us where this segment comes from and which minimum percentage. Then we have the reference material segment and the new, tr the new to be translated segment. And this green bars, which you see here, show us the text will change. The reference material can present us this. This is the translation of the reference segment, which we need to change, of course. And transit presents us one line more. This means the new segment, which is to be translated, has no formatting, but the old one had one. So Transit deleted this for us and presents us the translation of the reference material without formatting. And now I can do my translation. I delete the rest and I take it over with Alt Enter and confirm with Alternate Insert. In the next segment, Healthy is marked in yellow. Everything which has to do with terminology is marked in yellow. We did not indicate any dictionary in this project. So let me explain why we get a terminology suggestion in the terminology window. This terminology suggestion is based on markup or based on formatting. We have translated healthy here with this markup ID number, with gesund here. And this is perfectly to be identified as a matching pair. That's why transit can present us 
terminology suggestion based on markup. And that it comes from a markup is shown here by the color blue. Everything which has to do with markup is blue. So when I tr start translating, and I want now translate healthy and use the terminology suggestion, I can just take it over with a key combination. And now my translation is done. And I press alternate insert in order to confirm this as translated. I am finished. I finished my translation and I save my language pair. Now let me show you some basic review options. Everything which has to do with review can be found here in the tab Review. The first and most important option is the spell checking. Compared to, in general, the spell checking works as in any other Office application, but Transit does also have the possibility to use the, the project dictionaries and reference files as basis for spell checking. So let's just start the spell checker from file. And the end was reached, no spelling mistakes, yes, but spell check is complete. Okay, spell checking is done. Now let me just show you a, a very basic format check option. I open here options. And this option for markup is always activated, meaning that we can check if all the formatting is done correctly. So I just click on OK, and I, I start for the file. And the check is complete. Everything is OK. I save again. And now the work in the editor is done, and the next step is the export. Everything which has to do with project management can be found here. Project and export. Now the export dialog is opened. We have the target language, and we start the export. We receive a green traffic light. We have completed successfully, and we click on OK. And now let's open the export folder, which is, again, by default, under Installation Folder, Project, Name of the Project, and an Export Folder, and the Target File, the Target Language. And we can open up our translation and see it now in German. Formatting is all correct. Looks good. And now we have finished our first simple, simple translation project. Let's go back to Transit. We can close the export dialog, and we can close a language pair. The project settings can always be changed after the project definition. For this, I just go to the project settings and do my changes. All the key combinations used during the translation can be found in the user's guide. The settings for translation, for example, if you receive the the red circle line we have just seen can be determined in the user preferences. So this was part number two. Thank you for listening to part number two. And if further questions arise, please turn to this email address.